family. What's happening? Hey, Joe. See, I tied that hair up real quick, baby. Yes, Joe, the straw, you know. Honey, I'm giving you straw and highlight. Do you see that cheekbone, baby? Yes, isn't this song about? And of course, the artist for this song is our next guest today. Who would have thunk it? No, you had to throw it in there. Yes, Laura, I need a reusable straw. I'm not trying to, you know, plastic is trying to save the earth. Gotta have a straw. Okay, mess up. I'm like, you know, lips gotta be juicy and popping at all times. Come on, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your exes. Come on, join the live, y'all. I'm in rare form today. Giving y'all see through shirt. You know what I'm saying? Okay, this song is over. I'm gonna give everybody a few more minutes to join the chat. You know, everybody to remember what's going on. That last song was called The Long, by the way. It's off of Bardo's album, Gringo. We will obviously be discussing this tonight as well. Come on, let's join the party. Go ahead and wave it, everybody. Right Yes, everybody go ahead, get your Shazams out, you know, I'm, come on. This song is obviously called Backstroke. Yeah, you
All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm not gonna give it all to y'all because obviously we want you to download all the music. So I'm not gonna play all of it for you. So happy Monday, guys. Welcome to the Black Light series. Can you believe you guys, this is episode four. Is it one, two? Yes, we are already on episode four. Come, come on, just hand clap. We made it this far. Some of you may know, others may not. I am Allison Johnson. I am the host of the Black Light series. And I'm just here in my bedroom. You know what I'm saying? We all family here. We're just... So we're going to get straight into it. If this is your first episode, welcome. If you've been here for multiple, welcome back. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Keep watching. Let people know. Keep, you know, following. I'm Allie J underscore to the max. Our next guest, where is Bardo? So we have Stephen Bardo, better known as Bardo. He is a rapper here in Chicago. And you know what? He's going to be our first male guest. I feel like that alone. You know, next week I'm going to have like some hand claps and, you know, little stuff so I can, you know, entertain myself because no one else is here but me. And, you know, I want hand claps and stuff when I say stuff. But he will be our first male guest. And what a way to start it off. If you've already, you know, been here, you guys heard a bit of the music. So, you know what? Who better to speak for themselves than the actual person? So, Bardo, if you want to go ahead and request to join the live, we're about ready for you. Until then, what's what's going on, everybody? It's Monday. I know people are back to work. You know, the world is somewhat opening back up, which is the ghetto. But, hey, neither here nor there. Oh, let's go. He's joining the live, y'all. Let's get it together. Oh, we're connecting. Oh, there he is. What's hello, going hello. on, family? What's happening? What's happening? Good What's to see you. It's not like I didn't see him 10 minutes ago, but it's okay. We're going to act no. like this is the very first time. Y'all don't know nothing about it. We did not have a call before this. Y'all don't know this. Not I did at all. not look like this, you know, about a good 10 minutes ago, but it's okay. None of this was pre-planned. I didn't have a do-rag on 10 minutes ago. So. Absolutely not. I did not have one eyelash that was trying to, you know, come <laughs> off as I was running around. We didn't have none of that. Exactly. We're prepared. We're professionals. How are you doing? So what's going on? How's your day been going? We know it's a very, very hot day here in Ch Chi-Town. It, uh, it is quite a hot day, although you um, you told me a, a minute ago that you're from Florida and this is baby heat, so trying to just like, yeah i'm trying to keep it you know i'm trying to stick my chest out a little bit keep the complaints to a minimum i got you i got you could be hotter you know but uh no the day's been good um pretty productive um yeah that's all, that's all i can really say trying to i was trying to get out and enjoy you know sunshine a little bit but i don't know if i'm gonna be able to but uh mm -hmm. yeah, it's been all right <laughs> i'm looking at you mm -hmm. you tell me i shouldn't so i think i'm gonna just stay inside how about you though how's your day been my day has been, well, I've been running around like a sugar, my head cut off. But that's me every day, you know. Okay. Neither here nor there. I always find something that needs to be done. You know, that's just a woman's work. So, you know, it is what it is. Maxwell said it said it best. A woman's work, honey, is never done. He didn't say that. <laughs> never, ever, ever done. But, of yeah. course, I want you to introduce yourself. Like, no, we trying to hear about the new music. Okay, Taylor, I'm coming. Dang, boy, don't rush me. What up, Taylor gang? Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm being rushed. But go ahead and introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are. What's up? Let's go. Okay, okay. So, yeah, like you said, my name is Stephen Bardo, or I go by Bardo. That's my last name. It's also my artist name. I'm from Chicago. Um, I've lived here from, man, I don't even know. I lived in Chicago for a really long time. I currently <laughs> uh, reside in Los Angeles, but I've been in Chicago uh, kicking it for the last couple weeks. Um, yeah, I make music. Um, I produce. I write. I rap. I sing. Started out rapping, but kind of did the rest out of necessity. And, uh, yeah, eventually along the way, kind of um, developed a, a nice little band that I call Allied Forces. Okay. And um, that consists of my man James Trichler on the drums, who's also my engineer, uh, my boy Joe Meelan on the keys, my buddy Adam Wayne on the bass, of course, um, Josh Perez on the guitar, and my man Chris Shuttlesworth on the horn. So um, we, prior to 2020, we have been doing shows around Chicago. We've done some shows in New York, done some shows in Detroit, D.C. Um, yeah, and you know, I, my whole thing is strength the world. Um, I heard, I heard earlier that you 
um, were a Navy uh, kid. Is that right? Or a military kid? That's me. I'm a Navy brat. Yes, yeah, a Navy brat. So you, you're pretty familiar with the whole moving around concept as a youngin. Um, yeah, I'm so, also a flight attendant, so it's just in my blood. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So you really... <laughs> you I, really what's up? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I... Yeah, I I had a similar upbringing, so I'm all about, um, you know, I'm all about travel. I'm all about culture. I'm all about um, shrinking the world, as I like to say, um, bringing people together, building bridges, et cetera, through the, through the music, through the grooves, through, through all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, I'm here with Art Show today. You know, I'm a, I, I like to consider myself a good friend of, of the fam over at Art Show. We've done quite a few things together. So, you know, I'm just I'm happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. If not, we love a cultured black man. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> you got somebody had up in here today. We got the right people in the comment section. Y'all, y'all come on through now. Y'all come on through. Okay. So I guess my first question would be like, when did you start? Like, when did you discover that you had a talent and a gift for music? You know, when when did it? When did you discover that of yourself? Hmm. I think more than dis it was something I kind of built. I think more than discovered. I think I discovered that I had an interest really early on, but I don't know if I knew that I had a talent really early on. It was just something that um, I didn't have an issue working at. Um, so I grew up playing basketball because um, my dad was a basketball player. And um, one of the issues that I always had, like I had a good skill set, but I never really wanted to work on my game that much because mm -hmm. it just wasn't that fun to me. But when it came to working on, um, like, working on being able to rap or write a verse or making a beat or whatever, that never really felt like work as much. I would always kind of be daydreaming about working on my music when I was at basketball practice. So um, I think from a little kid, uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents that were relatively young when I was born. So they were big hip-hop fans. They introduced me to hip -hop, um, introduced me to Tribe. Fuji's, uh, The Roots, um, Common, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I always remember being super into the music and always being really obsessed with learning every single word and every single song. And I think that's kind of where it grew from. Um, eventually, I just decided, hey, let me try and do this myself. And in the beginning, it wasn't very good. And I knew it wasn't very good, but I just kept working on it and it was fun to do so. And um, so yeah, I think it's something that is that has been built more so than discovered per se. I, I'm not gonna. I don't think I have like a like a Michael Jackson story where I was just in the living room. You know? Okay, well, you know, Michael's was built too. Now let's not forget who his daddy That's was. That's good. That's very good. <laughs> Let there us not forget. That's true. That is very true. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah. So. That's kind of how I look at it. I like to say a lot of times, like, I, I personally feel like talent is a very real thing, but also being skilled is a very real thing. And I think more times, more often than not, when we are referring to someone as talented, yes, they do have a talent, but a lot of the times they've just built that skill up to where it looks like, you know, it's, it's muscle memory, it's natural. Um, so that that was the point that I was always trying to get to coming up and, and that I'm still trying to get to with my music. Absolutely. <laughs> so I just got a, a text from one of my friends that says, I need to interact with the guests. Okay, so let me read the comments since people are talking trash about me already. <laughs> First of all, I did see V is for Vanessa. She said, came out of the womb being awesome. We know. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I came out of the womb. You just popped right out, baby, and it was bad. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> that's, that's false. That is that, false. That's false. Look at all you. Look, pat yourself on the back. If you came out, if you came out awesome, you came out awesome. It is what it is. All right, I'll take it. I'll take there it. There you go. You know what? You got to uplift yourself because if you don't, who else is going to do it? You know what I'm saying? Right about that. That is correct. Let's see. Okay. My friend Deontay said, okay, head wrap. Okay. Thank you, Deontay. We appreciate it. You know, I second that. he wanted second. a funky little shout out today. He got it. He going to talk trash about me later, but it's okay. <laughs> Okay, we already heard from. Okay, see that's it, Jeez Louise. Okay, so Deontay, are you happy now? Thanks. And then, oh, Haley, hey boo, she said so much truth. Hard work is more than talent. I agree. I definitely agree because there are many talented people in the world, and as we can see from, I feel like a lot of the new and up and coming artists, they're very talented. 
but they don't want to put in the work. It's a lot of people who just want to be, you know, have that hit. They wake up the next day, they put out a song, and they want to be number one. It's like, okay, well, you have to put in the time, energy, money, work. Like, you have to just build it. Yeah, some people get the, you know, are lucky enough to just, you know, get discovered, but they still, I feel like a lot of people still put in that work. It wasn't like they woke up and somebody saw their video and was like, oh, yeah, we want to sign you. You know, it's just, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as people want you to think it is. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's an interesting point you bring up. That's something that I talk to a lot with uh, my buddy James um, and, and Mario, my manager. Shout out Mario. Shout out 12 Gage. Um, I'm not sure where you're at right now. But, yeah, that's something we talk about a lot, which is really just like being – um, being a legacy artist or being more career oriented versus um, maybe chasing a hit or like trying to get on by any means possible because like we all know that we could tattoo our faces and our entire bodies and dye our hair and that type of thing and that. Yeah, I'm getting started on that one. Well, yeah, you know, but we know that there's kind of there's a bit of a mold now or a bit mm -hmm. of a formula to go viral or to you know kind of break through. But it's like, how long can one sustain that? And I think we're starting to see that, like, that's not always the most sustainable thing. So, um, you know, I've always been pretty focused on, like, how can I set it up right now so that in 20, 30 years, people are still trying to hear and see me and not in a, not in a, oh, that was fun. That reminds yeah. me of high school type of thing. But in like, a, you know, I'm still really into what he's got going on type of thing because his growth is being continuous. So. Yeah, longevity. We don't want to just be like, you know, everybody uses that term. Oh, it's a bop. Okay, well, we want that bop to keep going. You know, what I'm like we want to expand on that. So we're thinking longevity. Everybody, yeah. anybody can be a one hit wonder. Anybody can get in the studio, throw some auto tune on it, and it be the song of the summer. But we all know it's a lot of one hit wonders. You forget all about them. Yep. Yep. And you know, you don't want to be that person. You don't want to be that person that just puts out something for the masses or for the media. And then, you know, five years down the line, it's like you back working at Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah, that's that's got to be a tough situation to be in. I can't say that I've been there, but I, I it's not one I would be there. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope, it's not fun. Especially, especially not in today's time when, like, everybody's got a camera, so it's not even like you really fake it. Like, it, yeah. it, it's treacherous out here. So longevity. There we go. That's the, that's the word. That's going to be our word for today, longevity. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, Zeph, so I, of course, you know me being the interviewer that I am. Your music has been on blast in my house all day. Appreciate so, that. I've noticed, of course, you sing in, like, you rap in English and then also, you know, Spanish as well. So, we want to hear a little bit about that background. Um, yeah. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, um, I have been really into um, the Spanish language and uh, Latin American culture specifically since I would say I was probably about 10 years old. Um, I've, I have, uh, you know, family, um, Latino family. I got, um, you know, <laughs> let me not leave folks out because I've Please been getting, I've been getting chewed out recently for leaving certain people out. So one of my best friends, Daniel, is from Colombia. I cannot forget that. Um, and also, my girl Vanessa is Mexican. I got family. I got brown family like all over the place, you know. So and I always kind of felt, I always felt like, you know, we're we're there's some kind of connection. You know, you feel it. There's there's a there's a connection there. There's a familial tie there, mm -hmm. black and brown people, regardless of what. Mm -hmm those in power might want us to think um, we definitely have much more in common than we do um, different. So, and that's always been my thing is trying to, um, you know, trying to really uh, build those bridges and, and show that like, maybe just cause I don't look like I speak your language, I still might, you know, and you could, and you could speak mine and it's okay. You don't have to fit into this one particular box or anything like that. And, um, my whole thing is like, yo, there's way more of us than there are of them. And I think you know who us and them are. So, like, I'm just, you know, my whole thing is trying to. Up to whoever needs their type of interpretation for that one. Exactly, exactly. Just trying to build them allies up. That's all. Yeah, you know, you know, there's so many brown people in the world. And it's like, 
for us not even to know our lineage is it's deep. Like <clears throat> it's so much deeply rooted in all, you know, people of color that we don't even know. Like of yeah. course we can go take ancestry DNA all we want to, but it's like what re like where are we really from? Like where do our roots really begin from? Mm -hmm. And until we until we start to have those type of conversations, it's just gonna be a an uphill battle. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um, my mom's family is, is actually from Cape Verde. And um, I like always knew that growing up, but I never, it was never really something I even thought about. <clears throat> um, but I feel like in the last few years, I started to try to kind of embrace that more and, um, and, and, you know, kind of express it more. But the biggest, one of the biggest things for me is like, I still haven't been there, you know, and like the fact that so many of us haven't even, then we haven't even stepped on the soil that our family is from or even like really experienced it, breathe the air, all that kind of stuff. Like it's a it's a real thing, at least from what I've heard from people who, you know, like let's say black Americans that have gone to Ghana, um, you know, or or Nigeria or, you know, any parts of South Africa, anywhere in Africa really. Um or even from, you know, from our brown family that go back to where their families are from. You know, it's just a certain type of um, certain type of foundation that I think you're able to build when you kind of know very well, you like intimately know where you come from. I think that's like super important. And I think the powers that be also understand that, which is why it's a difficult thing. You know, yeah, it's like, I can't tell you how many times people will literally stop me and shoot me like, so where are you from? I'm like, uh, Florida. They're like, no, where are you really from? And right. then like, if people ever see like my mom, my sister, even my grandma, my aunt, they're like, Y'all are not from America, so you can just stop stop saying that y'all are from, like, where are y'all really from? And I'm sorry, I can tell you, I ain't got no clue. I ain't got not, I don't know. Well, you just got to go find out. You got to just go, what you got to no, do? It. That's you the go, go to Africa and just start pointing, like, I kind of look like you. I kind of, take me to your parents. Let me meet your right. parents. Ah, you look familiar. You should Point them out. Ah. Right? That's all, that's all we can do. But yeah, that's definitely one of my goals this year. It's like, yeah, you know, people say, oh, answer to DNA, you give them their, you know, your DNA. They're going to know whatever. DNA is already in the system, y'all. Conspiracy theorists, just leave me alone about this specific topic. Okay? <laughs> I would like to at least know what the majority is because, you know, bone structure plays a large part in that and just like my skin tone. And, you know, I look exactly like my mother. So people literally will stop. If we're all together, like me, my mom, and my sister, they will stop us and be like, so what island are y'all from? Because it's definitely not here. <laughs> my friend Tiffany talking about, don't be talking about me. Girl, you are light-skinned. Let it go. <laughs> That's conversation today. Y'all, if anybody, Tiffany definitely thinks she's a dark-skinned woman. She's, she's still black, but she's light-skinned. But back to what I was saying. Um, and I think it's very important for us as you know, brown and black people to really know where we come from. Because like I tell people all the time who want to get into this argument about what's going on in the world today, I'm like, I didn't ask to be here. Honey, I could have been somewhere barefoot, running around, because I'm barefoot at home in Georgia anyway when I go back home. But, you know, I could have been back after minding my business. Y'all brought me over here and my ancestors. This is not my choice. Trust me, America is ghetto. I would not choose America first. <laughs> Fair enough. America is the ghetto because y'all been popping in fireworks for the last month. Um, July 4th is over. Let's move on. <laughs> I can't get no sleep at night. Let's move on. I, uh, I'll go ahead and second that one. I think, I think all the dogs in Chicago would agree but, with that. Oh, dogs. I feel so bad for them. Oh, Lord, bless their hearts. She's talking about I was saying I'm the, in the conspiracy theorist with my DNA. Oh, my bad. You don't have to roll your eyes, but you know, I just had to throw that out there. It's okay, no, boo. <laughs> We, we still love you, though. But, you know, back, because, you know, I can get real off topic. She's talking back to the show. Anyway, <laughs> so I definitely want what was, like, what is your, one of your favorite songs that you've recorded thus far? Like, which one means the most? Peace. Uh, which so one means? A key. If it's more than one, that's all right. You know, I'm not going to ask you to narrow it down to just one. That's not fair. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, because they're, they're like, you know, they're, 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 songs are kind of like your kid, you know, when you're an artist. Um, even though, like, I know that my mom's got a favorite, and I know it's me, so I'll try to go ahead and narrow it down. 
Um, <laughs> no, <Sorry, go> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, honestly, uh, to be, be completely honest, I was listening to Iguanque Tu this morning, and I was like, damn, I'm real proud of this one. Like, this, this is a song that I'm proud at when, like, when it comes on, I'm like, damn, like, I made this, huh? Like, this is, this kind of dope. So, for, for right now, I think that's the one, um, Igual Que Tu, just because of kind of like what went into it and competition wise, some of the things that I've been trying, I had been trying to achieve up at that point, up to that point, I was able to. Um, I would say Pendu Tricks is another one off of Gringo. That was, that's one that, um, I, can, I think I can say it now. We're three years away from that album being released. That's like my favorite song on that album. Um, it was just one of those hooks that I was, um, Honestly, Guadalupe Thu and Pen Pendu Tricks both have books that I don't fully feel 100% responsible for. It was just like, they kind of like, just came to me uh, at a certain time. Um, and yeah, and just musically, those are two songs that I, I feel like they make, me, uh, they make me feel proud when I listen to them. Definitely, so Joe says his favorite is Do Them Things. <laughs> That was that's a that's a OG that's a um that's a throwback man Joe yeah Joe's been there for a minute Joe's been bumping, bumping my stuff for quite a while but do the things was another fun one do the things actually came I don't know if I've said this publicly before but I but do the things came from me like I was making a song for my cousin uh, my cousin has like uh, has a goddaughter and a godson and she wanted me to make a, a birthday song for her goddaughter. And I was just starting to kind of like mess with making uh, songs based off of like, you know, chords on the on the keyboard. I came from sampling. I built up, you know, musically, all that type of stuff. But anyway, I didn't know the chords for Happy Birthday. I didn't know how to play Happy Birthday. So I just like played something different and saying Happy Birthday over it. But it was like really weird and jazzy and all that type of stuff. And it didn't work at all. But I ended up like I just really liked that groove um, that I had with the with the bass, the chords, and the drums. And uh, yeah, um, my boy James was like, yeah, maybe you should take this one a little more seriously. I had some like just BS lyrics on there and stuff. So I went back and worked on it. And, and yeah, we had uh, we had Emily Blue jump on it. Fortunately, she took it to a whole other level. She sounds amazing. Yes, love Thank you. Place. Thank you. Uh, yeah, she's she's amazing. She's, uh, she's a pro for sure. Um, so she helped take it to a whole other level and then um, my boy Reggie Chapman on the horns. Um, I know you didn't ask for all this, but I figured, hey, why oh, not? Oh, no. I, get, look, get, come on. Just come with it. Give it to uh, me. I'm here for it. Yeah. But, yeah, no, that's that's all. Shout out to Emily. Shout out to Peyton. Shout out um, shout out Reggie. Um, everybody who worked on that. My boy, Dr. Chicago, who helped me with the keys. Um, yeah, that was a fun one, man. That was, that was kind of the first. That wasn't the first song I ever put out, but it was definitely – the beginning of what I would refer to as the gringo era. Um, Cause before that, the music that I was making was a lot different than that. And I was really nervous to put that out because I was singing a lot more than I had before. There was more instruments. It wasn't as trendy as some of the stuff that I had dropped in the past. So that was a, uh, that's definitely a big one. I, that's, I will always, uh, <laughs> and he said, Clay, I kind of represent, hell yeah. <laughs> that's a new one. That's a new one I just dropped. Shout out sports. That one's out there. Everybody go check out Koyakan by uh, Sports on Spotify. That that one's got me on there. Um, Kevin Faye says on some. That's a super duper throwback from like 2011 or something like that. So shout out, shout out Faye. But um, yeah, um, do them things was dope. But uh, yeah, I still I still gotta go for right now for today because it changes. Which I think it changes with parents too. You know when you like. When you break something, then it's like your brother's the favorite. You know how it goes. So mm -hmm. right now, pin do tricks and he wants to get through with the favorite. Tomorrow, who knows? It might be do something. Absolutely. You know. That's that's the way it's supposed to be. You can switch it up though. It's all yours. You created all of it. It's all they're all your babies. So why not switch it up? Because I might wake up the next day and be like, yeah, you know what? You're not my favorite. We're gonna move on to the next one. That's how I feel, yeah. That's how I feel. And that you know what? And that's perfectly fine. And as you know audience as you guys know you can ask questions at any time if you want to drop questions in the little link the icon we will pull those up in probably like 10-15 minutes so we can answer any questions that you may have obviously I don't feel like I should have to tell y'all but I'm gonna tell y'all anyway go Apple Music Spotify whatever Bardo look it up download all that music go ahead and start streaming it 
That's what we're here for. We're going to put everybody on for the culture. Do that. Do that. Do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got the, look, I got the head wrap on for y'all today. I am for the culture. I see. Okay? <laughs> Let's be clear. So just in case anybody was confusion, we got it together. So I definitely want to ask, like, who is your, who would you say is your biggest musical inspiration? If you have one. Because, you know, it could be yourself. But, you know, I was, I'm not going to say of the popular people, but who would be, like, your biggest inspiration for music? Man, man. I just want, like I said before, we run down the list. That's what we're here for. Run okay. Okay. Um, I definitely have a list of, I call it, like, people that I want to move like um, from a musical standpoint. And then that kind of, um, that encapsulates not just the type of music that they make, but how they promote their music, um, how they've achieved longevity, like we've been talking about. Um, so I don't have that list in front of me right now, but I, Pharrell is always the top. I felt that. Listening to your music, I literally, that was like the person that popped into my head first and foremost. It was like outcast slash Pharrell. I was like, bam, right there. Mm -hmm. Well, you got me because Andre 3000 is my favorite rapper, so there you Let's go. See. Oh. <laughs> points for me, Alex. I got it. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess I wear my influences on my sleeve. Those are two of the biggest ones for sure. Um, Pharrell, um, kind of in how he just approaches everything, really. Um, uh, Andre always raps from a – Andre was the person – that got that kept me in the hip hop when I was starting to not get into it anymore. I was starting to kind of like, you know, not be as interested in it. Um, but I went back and listened to Outkast, which was another group that my parents uh, put me on really early. Um, but he he raps from uh, an elevated perspective, as if he's like watched the movie of what's going on in the world is if it's like a movie and he's watched it already and he's trying to tell you like, Hey, you might want to, um, you know, might want to pay attention in about 25 minutes. You know, you might want to, whatever. He just has a certain way of like putting things that it's like, he's a narrator more so than like a protagonist, which I always thought was a really, um, really cool perspective and a really cool way of approaching the song and something that I don't really hear very many people do. I think it's really easy to put yourself right in the middle and be like, okay, I'm talking about myself, talking about my experiences, all that type of stuff. But it's one thing to do that. Uh, and then look at it as if you're, as if it's almost like an out of body sort of thing. You're like describing it from a, from a detached kind of point of view. So um, rap wise, he's always somebody Every single time I write a verse, um, it's not like a what would he think of this, but it's like a, his verses make me feel a certain way is what I'm saying, making me feel something close to this. Um, so, yeah, uh, Anderson Pack's a big one in terms of mm -hmm. Oh, he's phenomenal. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's that's 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 my guy for sure um, when it comes to people out right now. I don't think that um, in terms of – Besides, like, the Spanish-speaking artists, I don't really think there's somebody I listen to more than Anderson Pack. Well, that might be tough. But, yeah, no, I listen to him a ton. Um, Omar from the U.K. is another huge inspiration. He's so slept on. Um, he's uh, considered the godfather. of my list right now. Yo, yo, check him out. Omar, um, his full name is Omar Live Fook. Um, Omar, O-M-A-R-L-Y-E. Hyphen F O O K. Got it. Yeah, he's dope. Super, super dope. Super funky. Um, man, who else? I yeah. Um, Krong Ben's been one recently that I've been listening to. Um, Lauren Hill is always in the oh, back. Don't get me. Do you see the head wrap? That was a good. I, I, I already know. <laughs> I'm already knowing. I'm a Lauren, Erica Badu, Jill Scott. Like, man, I am I am the soul R and B. My sister is always like, Girl, you you from Florida and you're not even hood enough. No. <laughs> I am a soulful woman, okay? I feel that shit from my heart. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I feel it from <laughs> I am definitely I am one hundred percent an R and B baby. Joe, 
Now, start with me talking about how do you guys feel about Kanye running for president? It is a joke. Please do not get me started on the Kanye thing because we will go, we will surpass the time that we have. Yeah, I don't know. Personal opinion on the Kanye running for president. For me, it all stems from the, the man really sat out here with a whole Make America Great Again hat on when it met with the president, was kikiing, you know, inviting a man to the cookout. And people were like, oh, no, he's just doing it. But no, this man was serious. So the fact that he just announced that he's running for president, do y'all not see that this man is just trying to take votes away? He's trying to sway it. So guess what? Every Look, no, we had Obama. They like, we're not giving y'all nothing else. No, hell no. We had Barack and Michelle. Michelle was from Chicago. That was a real black woman, okay? Yeah. They're not giving us anything else. They feel like they have our, you know what? They say, you know, we gave y'all token black. Yep. We literally cannot give y'all anything else. If y'all think that people are going to sit out here, and some people are going to vote for Kanye. If this is real, let me say that. If this is a real thing, People are going to vote for Kanye, but people must also realize that's going to take it away from the Democratic vote, okay? Yeah. Yeah. It is literally going to take votes that were going to be for Joe Biden. They're going to go to either Kanye or Trump. Right. But we all right. know white America is not going to be out here voting for Kanye West, okay? Yeah, that's a fact. Black folk, no. That's okay? a fact. White America is not going to be out here voting for Kanye West. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to vote for Trump. Yep. You know, do we do we see the disconnect or do we see what's happening? We're connecting the dots. It's really not that hard to understand. <laughs> I have not been a Kanye fan in years. Okay. And for me, it literally comes from, I feel like when it came with the, you know, we're going to make America great again and then we're going to take it back because let's not forget the, that whole black man decided that slavery was a choice. Let's not forget. Okay. Stuff that you say is around for forever, especially when you are in the spotlight as much as he is. A black man decided to say that slavery with, for black people was a choice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's not forget that. So for me, when that statement was made, I was just like, I hadn't been feeling Kanye in years. So the fact that he said that, I was like, eh, it's pretty much over for me. So for him, to turn around and be like, I'm going to run for president and then do the whole, we're going to have the Sunday church service and we're going to create a gospel album and blah, 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 we're going to sell Yeezy, you know, merchandise at this. No, no. <laughs> Mama, I'm sorry. You can kiss the blackest part of my behind. No. <laughs> it is all BS. You are trying to take advantage of the black community because you know gospel is deep rooted in us, honey. You yep. know we're going to come and listen to that. We're going to buy little funky tickets. We're going to be right at the little rallies like, oh, my God, Kanye's turned around. Oh, my God, he's for black people. No, y'all. It is for monetary. Okay, do you see that? Money's, money talks, baby. Money talks. Yeah, yeah. So we can't sit here and play like Kanye is doing this for the culture. Kanye is doing this for a check. Do you know who his wife is? Yeah. A check. Okay, that yeah. is the queen of making sure she monetizes that money at all costs. Yeah, it is. Period. Her, her sisters, her whole entire family. They don't give me look. Let me take a sip. Go ahead, I'm done. I can't do it. Well, why are you taking a sip? I will. Uh, oh, okay. Well, Joe has a, another question. Um, what, Joe? Don't. <laughs> I'm not jumping into this at all. Uh, uh what did he say? Okay, back to more serious note. How does one separate the person from the art? Ooh, oh no, that was it. Yeah. That was a good question, but he had, but he also says later, later on, he just said, and the Carters don't with the eyeball emoji. And that's where I'm going to just. <laughs> well, okay, and the Carters don't in what aspect? Come on, Joel, speak to me, baby. You know, we're here. Where you at, Joel? And the Carters don't in what aspect? Because, look, people going to hate me. I am <laughs> not the biggest Beyonce fan. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I literally, my, I don't, look, I told my friends this the other day. The only Beyonce album that is downloaded on my phone of music is The Homecoming, was literally Coachella. Yes, Joe really loves stirring the pot. He really does. <laughs> so for me, the reason why that is the only album downloaded on my phone is because I y'all going to hear about this to the end of time. I'm an HBCU graduate. 
that is where my heart is. So the fact that she really brought all of these, she brought attention to HBCUs. Because let's be clear, I can't tell you how many times someone who's not black has asked me, well, why do you need HBCUs? I've had people ask me, what is it? And I'm looking at them like, do you live here? Me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Or do you live in America? Like, what do you mean? Historically Black College University, for those who do not know. So people always want to, you know, say, oh, well, it's separate. Oh, you guys, why does it have to be separate? We did desegregation years ago. Y'all fought for this. But you must also realize, we may have fought for this, but we continue to fight. Because just like Juneteenth, Black people were free for two years in Texas before they even knew. <laughs> You still had us in slavery, but we was free. Right. Because guess what? From the beginning of time, y'all told us we couldn't read, we couldn't write, we didn't, you was going to kill us, lynch us, everything else. You let us know that we could not gain education to be educated on things that we needed to be educated on. So when it comes to, well, why are there HBCUs? Because we must not forget, though there was desegregation, PWIs, predominantly white institutions still exist so black people were still not allowed to go to those colleges so guess what we had to do create our own so when people say well well why why is there separation because we had no choice so though we are now allowed to co-mingle and we can all go to the same universities the things that i was taught and i learned at an hbcu i would not have learned at a predominantly white university period, point blank. And that's just off rip. So back to Joe's question, do the Carters do the same thing? In my personal opinion, and this is me coming from a girl who is not a Beyonce fan. I'm just gonna, I'm really not. So for me, I feel like when she speaks, it comes from a place of being a black woman because no matter how talented Beyonce is, no matter how much money her and Jay-Z have, people are going to see that they are black first. It doesn't yeah. matter about anything else. It doesn't matter that they may be the top power couple right now in the United States, and, you know, questionably the world. They are a power couple, but they are a black power couple. So we can say, you know, they, they could be doing the same thing that Kanye is doing, you know, when it comes to money. And it's not the same thing because... They're not going from, oh, guess what? We're going to support Trump to, oh, wait, I changed my mind. We're going to go back to support Black people, but we're going to make a whole gospel album. But guess what? We're going to sell our merchandise at the, at, at the events as well. So we're going to make sure we get our money either way. Let's not forget also that Kanye used the Confederate flag on his merch, uh, like, I mean, I want to say like five years ago, something like that. Come so on. I think, yeah, to your point, um, I think you broke it down perfectly, and I don't really have a whole lot more to add uh, differently than what you said. Um, I will just I shout out um, I shout out Howard University because my sister went there. Um, shout out Howard, yes, I love Howard. Um, but also, when it comes to Kanye, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm gonna be a hundred times. When I first heard it, um, I was like, huh. You know, well, what if he just gets, what if he gets like Michelle as a, you know, whatever? I fell into it. I fell into the trap. Uh -huh. And then I started thinking, um, I just started thinking about how absolutely, uh, I don't want to call, I'm not going to call the man insane. I'm going to say how absolutely inconsistent, consistently inconsistent he's been. Every step of the way. 2004. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a hundred, I think that's like super important to keep in mind because it's like, he could have, he, I'm not going to lie, like I, I did not like the slavery comments. I didn't really, I don't like the Sunday service thing because I, I feel you, I, he's a master marketer. He knows like, he knows what works, you know? Well, let's just leave it at that. He knows what works. That's it. Uh, even when he was doing the college dropout, like that was just good marketing. Like he, he yes. figured out what to say with what to make it work um, and how to appeal to us. But just the unpredictability of it all, I just, you can't have somebody in charge that is that, all over the place. I mean, we see that right now, you know. Thank God, we don't need it anymore. Yeah, yeah, nah. So um, I personally, um, you know, when it comes to the Carters, um, I have the utmost respect for them as um, probably the most powerful black couple and one of the most powerful couples, period, in the world. Like you said, you can only respect what they've been able to accomplish. Um, 
I I wouldn't I, I've never looked at either of them as like you know on that list of like my main main inspirations but you can't it, you'd be pretty hard pressed not to be inspired as a black person by seeing their trajectory and their growth and how it you and if anything else if we're comparing Jay-Z and Kanye or Beyonce and, and Kanye or you know whoever, whoever, she, whoever like, she is Jeff yeah, there's right. There's, there's a, a clear difference. Yeah, there's a certain level of of just like consistency and steadiness that the Carters operate with that I think would allow people to put a little bit more trust and confidence in them and what they were doing if they decided to go that route. But I think even they're knowledgeable enough to know that that's not even the route to really be going to change stuff. I think the way Jay is doing it, making these phone calls and. Exactly. People hitting up Michael Rubin, hitting up Robert yes, Kraft. and that's my thing about Jay-Z. And, you know, people can say what they want with, you know, when it comes to him in the NFL and things, you know, that he's decided, decisions that he's made. But he's making those phone calls to people that matter, that yeah. can make that change. And just like my homegirl Tiffany, she put, and, and my woman and her family has appropriated the culture for years. I will stand by that's no, that's real. That's the end right. of time. When I tell you, I will not support anything that a that a Kardashian West or a Jenner do because we have to realize. And I will, y'all gonna get tired of me, and I don't care because y'all gonna keep coming back every Monday to hear what the heck I got to say. Sorry. When it comes to the Kardashian West Jenner family, we as Black women have been talked about, ridiculed taken advantage of because of our appearance. Yes. Black women were literally put on display like zoo animals because yep. of our features. And we're talking about something we were born with. This is not something that, you know, we went to a plastic surgeon and got done. This is something literally we have grown into. And I see that in myself as a 27, almost 28 year old black woman that I'm developing those features that black women develop as far as hips and ass, honey, I done messed around and got a booty. I ain't never knew. Hey, hey. come on, pound with it. I didn't even know I was going to get a booty, baby. Mess around with my name. Like, how good she was. Good for you. <laughs> so the fact that a whole family can come and appropriate black culture, the mm -hmm. fact that Kim Kardashian can go out here and get cornrows, and somebody out there decided to make a an article and said they are boxer braids. It's <laughs> mind boggling. And for you, and this is the thing, people say, oh, well, Kim has no control over what they say, but you have control over what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something, when that article could have, when that article came out, baby girl should have came out and said, oh, no, 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 no. This is not about me. I did not yep. create this. This comes from a culture that my family has been appropriating for years, monetizing. Yeah. Because we can sit here and say, oh, Kim is so gorgeous, this and that. But she did what she had to do to look like a black woman. Absolutely. Because where she come from, women don't come looking like that, baby. Because we have seen those old photos of you and your ugly sisters, okay? Y'all was not cute. Money made you look like somebody. And you decided, I guarantee y'all went into that plastic surgeon's office and, said, and showed them a picture of a black woman and said, this is what I want to look like. So for you as a woman to come and take what black women had fought to make beautiful, because let's be clear, I am a dark-skinned black woman. Dark-skinned dark women ain't been in until like the last three years. Yeah. Because I didn't call every type of burnt brownie, nigga, and everything else in the book just because the color of my skin, which I have no control over. Right. right. I don't have no control of coming out as a dark-skinned black woman. This is just how I was made. So the fact that I can come out like that and someone have something to say about something that I have no control over goes to show you, like, it is, it is something that is taught. It is not something that people just wake up and decide, this is how I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we say, you know, anything that has to do with Kanye, honestly, for me as a Black woman, I have no respect for him as a Black man because of who he's with. And people say, who are you, who you're with does not determine who you are. Yes, it does. Because you took the vow of marriage with somebody who appropriates someone who looks like your mother Damn. and makes money off of it. Damn. 
and we can be out here okay you know she's getting people out of prison and she's you know and because <laughs> it's people who these, these are people who should have been in there in the first place so guess what it ain't got to do with her because she's not a lawyer her name is just attached to it there are people who are actually doing that work okay people people with the degrees doing that work but Joe got another question I will leave you alone because <laughs> right, Joe said <laughs> Bardo what do you do to make sure you are appreciating the culture instead of appropriating Sure. Um, I think one thing um, that was super, well, one thing that's, that I always do is make sure I go to my people whose, whose culture that I'm trying to appreciate or represent and be like, yo, how did this feel to you? Let me play this for you. How do you feel when I say this? Does this, does this make sense to you? Because this is, this is yours. This isn't mine. Like I'm you know, hyper, hyper aware of, um, you know, my, who I am and who I'm not. And like, I'm not Latino, but I love Latino culture, you know, and I, and I use it in a lot of my music. So I always try to make sure that like those around me that are from that culture, um, appreciate and, and give the blessing to what I'm doing. Really. If I don't have the blessing, I'm not going to put it out. Mm -hmm. I think another thing, um, that's important is really trying to like understand just like we have, just like we have issues here in the U.S. that are really coming to the surface right now. Um, yeah, that was a great question, Joe. Um, like that, we have issues that are coming to the surface here. There's issues that are happening all over the world. There's issues that are happening in Latin America. There's issues that are happening to Latinos in America that we also need to be aware of because you know we got to be allies for one another. It's not a one-way street; it's a two-way street. So. I try to make sure <clears throat> I try to make sure I stay informed about you know what's going on with immigration, what's going on um, with you know the relationship between Puerto Rico and the U.S. in terms of statehood, in terms of all the resources that are being withheld. Um, you know, I, I try to do my research. You know, I've, I've been to, I went to Cuba and I learned a lot about their history and, and about how you know, their relationship with the U.S. and how the U.S. has screwed them over, too. I could go through pretty much every country in Latin America and tell that story. But I think the thing is, the thing is doing your homework um, and not just, like, not just on the cultural level, but, like, even on a musical level. Like, I didn't even want to put out, like, I wanted to make sure I wasn't coming off as a character. There's a particular artist from the West Coast, whose name I really don't even want to say because I don't want to give him no shine, but he's been putting out like horrible music for a really long time. But he just recently started doing it like in like with some Spanish stuff going on. I can't even say in Spanish because it's not in Spanish. It's just really, really bad, like lowest common denominator. We'll like talk about that later because I want to hit his bad music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, there's a couple, but. Um, the one I'm thinking of in particular, yeah, it's just like the most like stereotypical, the most like just base level. You didn't do no homework. You didn't even go on Wikipedia. Like, oh, Lord, not even Wikipedia. Not even Wikipedia to oh, see, like, man, maybe this is, maybe I shouldn't say this this way. Like, I just think there's a certain level of sensitivity that I can feel when when people come to me and they're genuinely concerned about how I feel about how they may be um, appreciating my culture and a certain level of openness um, that comes with that. Um, so I think I always try to approach, uh, I always try to approach anything that I do that involves either Spanish or Portuguese or any other culture other than mine. I try and do a ton of research. Um, I try and make sure I know how to speak the language for one. Um, and make sure those around me that I know who are part of that community feel comfortable with me using it in that way. Oh, honey, that was a mouthful. So, Joe, that, <laughs> that, that had that question, there you go. My man does the research, okay? You know, I'm just hopping out there and, you know, speaking in Spanish and just going to throw it out there. I'm done. Uh, the research. <laughs> look, that, look, that Kanye question got me hot. I ain't going to lie to y'all. We see. That was a good one. That was a good one. Woo! Keep yeah, somebody, I don't, I don't really preach that, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that ties into, oh, my God. We're going to keep it short because we got, like, three minutes left. 
Oh what man, the dude. Whole 50 Cent decided that exotic women is a thing. Like, sir, you are tar black. Your mama and your daddy black black. If you don't sit your ugly my down somewhere, look, stop it. You stop it right now. And then look, man, you have the audacity to laugh. You with the three dreads that you have left. Oh. You know, that's the tea. If you don't put the lean down, put them drugs down, baby. Because that's what's wrong with you right now. Oh, no. and, and then the crazy thing is, the mother of one, like, first of all, both of your mother's children are black. Yeah. Yeah. Like, your first daughter is black, black. Yes, she is. So, the fact that you over there kicking, yeah, and the fact that your daughter rides for you so hard, and this is how you do her, yeah. baby. Yeah. Just make, look, I tell my, make sure I'm in the wheel because I'm done with you. <laughs> I'm done. You make sure I get my coins because I'm done. Like, are you serious? And you talk about exotic, sir. These women are only with you for your money. Are you kidding me? I did. So I didn't see the, I'll be honest, I didn't see the 50 thing. It's not I didn't surprising. watch all of it either. I couldn't do it. Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not surprising. Um, Wayne, Wayne makes me really sad uh okay so on the 50 thing i hate the term foreign i think that's like the worst like it's so it's so trendy and it's so it's just awful it's so cringy it's the worst thing ever um so let's just yeah that whole exotic foreign thing 50 traveled way too much to be still using terms like that for people literally <laughs> because he knows better uh secondly um wait so we said 50 we said who was the other one that we were checking out? oh wait yeah, Wayne, uh, man, Wayne really makes me sad because we all grew up with Wayne, you know, but I really think, and this is not an excuse at all, I think this is really on the people around him, but I always hear Regine, who you mentioned, or um, or uh, Toya, you know, always talking about, oh, uh, Wayne, Wayne lives in his own bubble, he's in his own world, he don't really know what's going on and all that, but it's like, that's not an excuse, exactly. Yeah, 2020. Right, educate yourself, Wayne. Um, <laughs> uh, we, I got a question. Do you have any? Oh, Haley, she said, do you have any advice for beginners, amateur songwriters? Uh, my best advice would be to write, 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 take a break, drink some water, write, 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 <laughs> write. Um, yeah, that's that would be my best advice. You, you just got to get shots up. It's like it's like anything. You, you got to get reps. In. Um, uh, speaking of Wayne, he actually did have a, a good quote, you know, back in the day, he used to say repetition is the father of learning. And that's true. You just really want to, uh, songwriting, like I talked about earlier, a lot of people do have a talent for it, but a lot of it is just skill. It's a skill that you build up. So, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, uh, you're not going to have your own voice when you first start. Um, you want to take, so take those people that truly inspire you. For me, a lot of it, it was Pharrell, it was Curtis Mayfield, it was D'Angelo, um, it was many others, but those were three big ones. And I just started trying to write songs like them. I started trying to write hooks like them. I started trying to, you know, sing like them. And, and I never got to that point where I was singing like D'Angelo. I don't know if I ever will, but it gave me uh, a better idea of what I could do with my voice and what limitations I did have, what strengths and weaknesses I had. And from there, I was able to figure out what my sound was and where I could do it. So I would say just do it. Do it a lot, all the time. That's it. Okay, so Joe, you said Young Money, though. Okay, we all know it was great. We got Drake out of it. I'm not a Nicki Minaj fan. I guess y'all could say y'all got her out of it. But um, neither here nor there. We got 37 seconds left. Bardo, oh. let the people know what you wanted to know in like 15 seconds. Let's go. Yo, Bardo here at Where is Bardo? I guess you watch me on this, so you already know that. Facebook.com slash Bardo AF. Gringo's out now. Groovy AF is out now. Igual que tú is out now. Tranquila's out now. New single coming very, very, very soon. New video coming soon. New project coming even after that. We got a ton of stuff going on. Shout out our show. Shout out to you. Shout out Joe. Shout out everybody. Shout out Corey. Shout out Eddie. Uh, everybody, the whole band. All right, he's talking like